Sure. My name's Erin Castaldi, and I'm a haiku poet. Uh, here's a few poems. July heat, weaver's web spans, a dove's coo. Gray crane abides, scent of low tide, pressing his feathers. Crinoline wings, take hostage my lamplight, lazy August night. Splitting the sky, one deep crimson vein evaporates the moon. Cracked pottery among walkway bricks, congregating moonlight. Daddy long legs, cold stone corner, long summer shadows. House on deep water. Drops fall, craters dot the earth, sand splashes upward. Well, I've been a writer for as long as I can remember, but I've gotten into writing haiku because I am just in love with the three line format. So where I live on the East Coast of the United States, it is a gorgeous area, especially in the spring and summer and fall, I mean, and winter too, but um, I can take a walk and I can hear birds and see mossy trees. I can go to the ocean. I can um, go swimming. I can, I live on the, on the river currently, and it's amazing the amount of wildlife you can see when you just kind of slow down and take a look at things. Um, Usually it's just something simple that inspires me, whether it's uh, a beautiful sunset or stars at night, just happen to go outside to walk my dog, something mundane like that, and something will strike me, um, some kind of moment that I want to capture and share with other people. That's, um, that's usually what, what kind of inspires me. Sure. Uh, well, haiku um, is from Japan, and it's basically a simple poem that really just talks about um, the universal truths and the natural environment. So, okay, so July heat, weaver's web spans a dove's coo. That is really just uh, simple. It was a July afternoon, and it was really hot, and I was outside on my front porch just kind of sitting and being quiet with myself and I noticed a spider's web so it was an orb weaver and he was just or she um making a web and it was just interesting to me and there was a lot going on in nature I noticed that a dove was cooing and just these kind of disparate elements brought together in a poetic way really just creates a moment in time that is special. Um, so gray crane abides, scent of low tide pressing his feathers. Um, I was at the um, I was at the bay, and I was sitting on the uh, on the edge there of the water, and I was just watching a crane. Um, walk around the mud and among the reeds and the grasses and low tide can be a difficult scent to get familiar and get comfortable with if you're not from uh, a beachy area it's it's a little pungent and I just thought um you know do birds really do birds smell do they know what low tide smells like and just abiding the scent of low tide on his feathers kind of came to me and I think it was done in, a, in, in kind of a poetic way that kind of um, points out, you know, how I how I felt about it and, and what I was seeing. Because haiku has a lot um, a lot of sensory um, incorporation. You use all of your senses, and the more the better in a haiku. Cracked pottery among walkway bricks congregating moonlight. 
So this is just standing outside in the evening and noticing that after a rain, the cracked pottery pieces in my front walkway, because I live in a Victorian home, um, I, I saw these little puddles of moonlight between the bricks. And basically, haiku is really just stating a profound moment in a really simple way. And that's what I think that this kind of accomplished. Cracked pottery among walkway bricks, congregating moonlight. Um, basically, I just get outdoors and allow the moment to encourage stillness. Um, nature is never stagnant. It's always evolving. Um, I don't like to use big words or write in metaphors. I just look for a moment of deep importance and I try and keep it simple. Uh, you know, they don't always have to be in three lines. Sometimes they're in two and some are really good one-liners, but you just have to be willing to be quiet with yourself and kind of let let the images come to you, you know, let nature be nature and just pick out those moments that you feel drawn to and try and write them in a poetic way, you know, make them beautiful. Sure. Um, I'd encourage someone to zoom in on their subjects, um, to put yourself in the shoes of your object. Um, also write a lot every day. Um, a lot of it's going to be bad. Three quarters of the poems that I write are terrible, but you can't be afraid to go through paper and you have to write through the junk, you know, and then that's when you find the gems. Um, when I write, usually I let it marinate in my book for a day or two. And then when I go back, I always find some kind of nugget, some kind of line that I love or idea that I want to expand and, and rework or even sometimes it's just a word that's that's really great that reminds me of the event or the um, situation that I want to kind of write about. Basically it's just about putting pen to paper and getting it down. Um, well, I'd suggest that you just take the time to relate to the poem. Um, just read it more than once and use your awareness to pay attention to what is going on. You know, what senses are being um, utilized in the writing and what senses you are experiencing when you read it. Um, are you feeling sad? Do you feel confused? Do you feel... Um, indifferent, do you, are, are, you know, what kinds of um, experiences is this poem encouraging in, in you? Um, so, yeah, I just kind of uh, make it personal, you know? Haiku is a short poem. It's, it's very tiny, but everyone relates to it differently. Two, two people can read the same poem, any poem, not just haiku, and find a totally different um, inspiration from it. You know, they, they can kind of relate to it in different ways. And I think if you just take your time and read it more than once and try and put your shoes into the writer, you'll see what they're trying to show you. Sure. Well, um, I'm from New Jersey, and so is this poet. His name is Nick Virgilio, and he is deceased, but he was a poet from Camden, New Jersey, and he wrote haiku for 45 years, and his stuff it makes me cry every time I read it. Um, a lot of it is about um, his brother um, being killed in Vietnam and his family really never moving on, and it's just his stuff is so poignant and so emotional. It evokes such feeling from its readers that people still revere him today. Um, so my one of my um, poems that I think are stellar is from the Haiku Moment. It's an anthology of contemporary North American haiku, and it's by Winona Baker. 
moss hung trees a deer moves into the hunter silence that one i really like and i have another one too this one's by francine banworth in cellar darkness where potatoes lie sprouting falls a wedge of light haiku can be really simple it doesn't have to be um It doesn't have to be profound. It doesn't have to be intense. It can just be simple. It can just be um, someone's average experience. And that's meaningful too. Even the cellar rats sleeping late this snowy morning. This is by Penny Harder. And the, the fun thing about haiku is that it can be funny. It can be, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. It can be comical or... Um, just kind of poke fun, you know? That's why I like it, because it's so versatile. Uh, sure. Um, well, actually, I really love the Nick Brugilio Haiku Association. They have a, um, a writer's house where they teach students in the area um, at-risk youth um, the, the beauty and the um, just loveliness of poetry in general. And they've got all kinds of poets who come and offer their time to teach about what their specialty is or what their passion is. And they hold, um, you know, seminars and workshops and things. And, yeah, they're, it's a fantastic organization, the Nick Bergiglio Haiku Association. 